Hey everybody, Tom here, and today I want to teach you how to set up Champions of Midgard, a really cool worker placement game that for a lot of people has kind of uh, maybe replaced, I don't know if that's true, replaced Lords of Waterdeep, or I don't know, it's basically Lords of Waterdeep with random combat, like rolling combat. Really cool, awesome artwork, love it. We'll talk more about that later maybe. Alright, so we go ahead and open up the lid, we've got our rule book here. Um, I just want to say up front, this is not a review. I don't love this rule book. I uh, remember reading it and really struggling with it. Um, it kind of, <laughs> like the whole game is a worker placement game and they talk about the worker placement here. And then <laughs> all of the rest of it is explained in this teeny tiny index or appendix. So <laughs> not my favorite rule book, but a very fun game either way. All right, so you may notice I have the camera pulled back pretty far. You're going to see this stupid microphone thing dangling. Sorry, I don't know how to do that differently or better, but whatever. And that's because this board is so big and so vertical. <laughs> like, a lot of times, <laughs> I feel like most games, a good chunk of them have horizontal uh, boards, but this one is definitely vertical. So it's going to take up a good chunk of this camera space. Okay, so there's the board. Now in here, uh, let's talk about what we've got. When you buy this game, your copy will not have this Plano box. I got this Plano box from Walmart, like $2 probably. And let me just show you what I've got in here. I've got the food and the wood in the same container. And then I have glory tokens, coins, and blame tokens. Now, in the middle, there was too much glory and too much coin, too many coins to fit into here. So I just have this in the middle as a mixture of the two, rather than having like these things separated. Probably a dumb idea, but it works for me. You organize your game how you want to. Uh, in the game, we also have this quick reference guide, which does a pretty good job. It just shows you all the different cards and all the different symbols for the resources and things like that. Um, so we have that there. I'll keep that nearby, probably up here. And then we've got a bunch of different character tiles, and these character tiles have very cool artwork on them. And we're just gonna go random here. My, I'm gonna try to get one guy and one girl, so let's see what happens when I totally randomly draw. Two. We've got it, a guy and a girl. So we have Svanhildr and Asmundar. Um, yeah, good accent there, Tom. So let's go ahead and put those there. The rest are going to go back in the box because I'm going to be setting up a two-player game. And let's see what we've got in here. Uh, we have, this is kind of my hodgepodge bag of lots of different things. So take these out and I'll show you what we've got. Okay, first thing we've got are three kind of damage tokens. These are to track the monster's damage as you play. You really don't need more than three of those. And I think most people just store them here or who knows, wherever you're going to store them. Starting player, let's make starting player Svan Hilder. And then you're going to find eight of these uh, market stall tiles. Four economic, four military. And in a two-player game, you're going to just take one of each. So let me just mix these up. We're going to use that one. Mix these up. We're going to take this one. In a three-player game, you would take one more economic. And then in a four-player game, you have two of each all together. So we're done with those. These can go back into the bag and back into the box. Player colors, we're gonna stick with blue and red. We'll set those up in a little bit. We've got all of our warriors in the form of dice. And so these warriors, we just wanna make a pool of them over here on the side, sure. And then we've got some ships. Now there are, uh, how many, six ships here. And you're going to see that two of these ships are labeled as public long ships. These need to go on the board. Oh, how about I put these on the board too? Oh, this box. Okay. So this board is just so big. All right. We're putting these square ones, the economic and the military, down here on the uh, market stall tiles. These two public long ships are going to go here on the spaces labeled public long ships. <laughs> really exciting. And then you see four more tiles here. Uh, in a two-player game, you're going to put out these two tiles, and they just go on the side. I usually just put them here in the resource tray, kind of like that. And then this is only used in a three-player game. This one is used in a four, three. Yeah, this is used in a three-player game, and these are both used in a four-player game. So those go there. Now, your game does not come with these red 
really fancy red papers here. <laughs> the thing about this game, again, I love me a good insert, and this one is it's better than Fantasy Flight. So in this insert, uh, you have small cards and big cards, and there's this nice recess here so that you can put your finger in and grab the cards. Unfortunately, no matter what you do, you will never be able to grab all of the cards. And in fact, the only way for a long time that I was ever able to grab all of the cards is by emptying out the insert and just dumping them into my hand. And that was the only way I could find to get them out without damaging the cards. So out of frustration, I just um, taped, I'll t look, this is how this works. You just pull the tab and the cards come out. I have not copyrighted this idea yet. You're welcome to use it. But you can see I literally just took a one inch strip of my famous red paper and I just, you know, taped it into there. And then I just, I had, it was really long and then I just figured out what length I needed it to be and I snipped it. It took two minutes, but it has saved me so much frustration. I can't even tell you. All right. So we have a big deck of cards or a big deck of big cards and a big deck of little cards. And these are actually made up of lots of different kinds of cards. So in this big deck of big cards, <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying that. We have troll cards. We have draugr cards. I don't know if that's how you pronounce that. They're red. And then you have these green cards. And so what we need to do is we just need to shuffle these decks of cards and we're gonna go ahead and put them here for the troll. Now it's really hard to see on camera, uh, but there is a square here and you can really lightly see the back of this card. In fact, now that I've got the cards here and I'm thinking about it, kind of cool that they've made this so that you could turn these either way, but in a game where you have such vertical presence <laughs> and you're just gonna be displaying one card, it's nice to have these all facing the same direction. It took me so long to figure out how to tell which way was face up and the only way I can figure out is by looking at the heads of the um, weaponry there. So that means that this card is on the top face up now. So I'll do my best to place it that way so I'm not fighting it during the gameplay video. Um, just give these a nice quick shuffle. I always shuffle when I clean up anyway, but so you guys don't think I'm cheating. Shuffled, there is a nice outline here for the Draugr cards. I have them face up there. And then we've got these monster cards. Let's give these guys a quick shuffle like that ish sure and here just just for officiality if my cousin was watching this he would make sure that i shuffled completely seven times we'll, we'll go two and call it good so do another official shuffle this particular deck is big enough you can do that without causing too much damage monsters go here now the smaller deck the the deck of smaller cards is what i mean to say has four different decks inside of it so we have these rune cards here. These are kind of like one-off special abilities that you can buy. We're just gonna shuffle those. They go up here. And then we have, these are merchant ships. So let's take these merchant ships here, give them a small little shuffle like that. And we're gonna place that right there. And then over here we have uh, these are destiny cards, I think they're called. Yeah, so give these a good shuffle. Oops. And these go right here. And then finally we have uh, journey cards. We're gonna give these a shuffle. And again, all of these are labeled on the board, so that makes it up really easy. And these are gonna go right here on these journey spaces. Uh, let's set up our play areas or our player areas. I'll try to keep it as much on camera as possible, but don't really want to move the camera. So these player boards have a nice huge picture on one side with the special ability listed. And on the other side, it's a smaller picture, but place to hold all of your warriors and also a spot to put your player color. So we're going to go ahead and open this up. And in a so what is it? I think in a three and four player game, you would put one of your worker meeples back into the bag and it goes out of the game. But in a two player game, you keep all of them out and about. So I'm gonna kind of get rid of that. And one of these meeples is gonna come over here into the worker huts. Four of them are gonna stick around. We're gonna designate this as the player color there and put one of our markers up here for scoring. Excuse me. Now, 
I was kind of playing around with this on camera because when you're playing with multiple people, it's really easy to, for me to hold on to blue and know that I'm the blue player. Um, but it's really hard to read on camera. So I'm going to just go ahead and just slip one of these. This is just one of my own papers underneath it. And I think on camera that will help us remember that Svan Hilder is the blue character. And this might make things a little bit easier to read. And again, I know this is a little off camera. Uh, I just don't want to move the camera. Okay. We're also going to give her this starting uh, player token. Okay, perfect, just like that. Uh, oh, one more thing that I <laughs> found that had fallen out of a bag. We've got this round marker, so we're going to go ahead and put this round marker on round one. Okay, now every character is going to start off with some starting items. Uh, every character is going to start off with one of these white dice. We're going to talk more about these. These are the swordsmen. That goes right there on the top. Hopefully you can see it okay. And then they're going to start off with one glory, one coin, uh, one food and one wood. So we'll just go ahead and load Svon Hilder up there. And then also one destiny card. So we're going to draw a destiny card. We'll talk more about this, but it looks like she got the troll slayer. She's going to try to have the most trolls. So that's what Svon Hilder is going to be working towards. Let me come over to the other side and let's set up the... Oh, I need my red paper though. Sorry, walking behind the camera. Really exciting. YouTube. Okay. <clears throat> so we have Asmunder as Asmunder. Duck, duck, duck. Okay, uh, flip that over. We're going to put a red paper behind it just so it reads on camera, hopefully a little more strongly than it would otherwise. And we'll go ahead and dump out these player pieces. So again, we'll designate him as red because the paper might not be enough. And we're just going to go ahead and put this all the way up here on the glory track. And then we keep four worker meeples in front of us. One of them goes in front of the hut. We need a white die here. This bag is going to go out of the game, but we need some of this stuff. A wood and a food, a glory and a coin, as well as, um, slide that over just a little bit, as well as a destiny card to start off. So this destiny card is a craftsman. And he's going to try to have the most wood at the end of the game. All right. Sounds fair enough. And there we go. And I think, as far as I can tell, oh, we're almost ready. So I'm going to do one more thing. This is the end of the basic setup. And then when we actually start the game, you like set up the round. But let's just set up the round now. And that way, when we jump in to explain the rules of the game, things are kind of showing. So when you set up the round, you basically flip a bunch of cards over. And so we need to have a troll available to fight. We need two draugers available to fight. Those go there. And then what we're going to need are three monsters to fight. So this column is only used in a four-player game. So we're two-player games, so we're going to fill up these three columns over here. And so what you do is you put a monster in each of these spaces like that. And then we need some journey cards, and these journey cards go face down. You don't even see them in front of the monsters. Like that. And then the merchant ship, we flip one of those over there. And then we're going to flip over two rune cards. So you kind of just fill up the spaces next to the decks and like that. One more thing that we need to do is we need to load up kind of the village spot here. So we're going to put one food in the smokehouse. We're going to put an axeman, the black die, in the blacksmith. We're going to put a spearman in the um, hafter. Aft, ha, hafter? I don't know. And then a sword in the swordsmith. And those are ready to go. And I think we are there. We're ready to go ahead and play um, Champions of Midgard. I'm excited. This is a cool game. Um, Ultimately, my goal is for people to enjoy this playthrough well enough that they want to see the expansions that I just picked up. I haven't played with those yet, but I want to. Um, I just didn't want to have my first Champions of Midgard video be the base game and both expansions all together. Um, and so we'll do the base game now, and if people have interest, we will definitely do a playthrough video with one or both of the expansions. Just depends on what you guys want. So if you want to see this game played through, go ahead and click on the link in the description of this video. And hopefully it'll turn out well for me. <laughs> I'm going to win and lose either way. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this was helpful for you. And we'll see you in the gameplay video. Bye!